katılımcılarımızın gelmesini bekliyoruz. Merhabalar herkese, hepinize AFP Talks webinarlarına hoş geldiniz. Bugün University of Sheffield'da bütçe dostu mühendislik programları ve istihdam olaylarını anlatmak için Uluslararası Ofis Yetkisi'nde Julia, Ayman, Jonathan, Natalka ve Pınar Hanım bizlerle olacak. Lütfen sorularınızı soru cevap bölümünden yönlendirilmesi sunum sonrasında tüm sorularınız cevaplanacaktır. Yes Julia, the stage is yours now. Thank you very much. Well, hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. So we're here joining you from the University of Sheffield in the UK to tell you a bit about studying with us here in Sheffield and more specifically today about studying engineering with us. So my name is Julia Pitchford. I'm the regional manager for Europe at the University of Sheffield. And hopefully you can see my email address there if you do want to get in touch after today's webinar. It's also possible to make one-to-one -one appointments with me via Calendly, uh, and that link is available and accessible on our web pages. We're also lucky to be joined today by Pinar from Educas. Educas are our trusted representative in Turkey, so if you do have any questions uh, today in Turkish, she can help with those, but also following today if you want any help with applications, visas, information about funding opportunities and things like that then do please get in touch with Educas or of course ourselves. So without further ado, I will start the presentation and I will share my screen. Uh, if colleagues could just let me know when they can see my screen. Yes, we can see. Perfect. So now it's not wanting. Oh, okay, here we go. It is moving now. Perfect. So the agenda for today's webinar then is a brief overview why Sheffield uh, and of course things that you would need to know to apply to come to the University of Sheffield, such as the entry requirements and a bit about the scholarships that we have on offer for Turkish students. Then I will hand over to my colleague from the Faculty of Engineering, Dr. Jonathan Aitken, who'll be able to give you much more detailed information about what we offer specifically within the engineering subjects. We're also lucky today to be joined by one of our international engineering ambassadors, Amiral, so he can give you an overview of his experience as a student studying engineering at Sheffield. And then, uh, as I said, we have Pinar from Educas, our Turkey in agent. So hopefully once we have finished our individual presentations, there will also be chance for some question and answers at the end. So first of all, then, why choose the University of Sheffield? Well, you may or may not know where exactly we are. So just for those of you that don't know where exactly we are in the UK, we're extremely central, as you can see there on the map. We're one hour, 10 minutes from Manchester Airport. So that would be your direct flight in from Turkey and just two hours by train to London. But as you can see there, we're really centrally located, which makes it great to be able to travel up to Scotland, down to the south, across to Wales, a short ferry or flight across to Ireland, and to get across to the continent of Europe, 
we are direct train into St Pancras, which is then the Eurostar across to Paris. So in terms of travelling around the UK, as well as externally out from the UK, it's a really great location to be. A bit about the history. Uh, well, originally we date back to 1828 uh, and in order to gain university status in 1905, there were actually uh, alumni uh, and people working in the region of Sheffield who donated one pence from their wages, raising up to the equivalent of 15 million pounds today so that we could gain university status in 1905. And these kind of donations and alumni support are still the way that we actually uh, provide some of our scholarships today, but I'll tell you a bit more about our scholarships in a moment. So we started with 114 students and now have over 30,000 students. We're a leading global university, a world top 100 university, and as well as a member of the prestigious Russell Group in the UK. And 92% of our research is rated as world leading or internationally excellent. We've got a long history of welcoming students from all over the world. So I said we have about 30,000 students in Sheffield and about a third of those are international, including those from the EU. And those range from over 150 different countries around the world. We've got many different student societies that you can join that are connected to those different cultures, whether it's to learn a language, more about the culture, dance, music and movies that come from those particular countries, or also just to make friendships, which hopefully last way after you've left university. We have many celebrations of international culture in the university and the wider city of Sheffield, including many supermarkets, international shops and restaurants, just in case you're missing those home comforts. So in the university, we have 50 departments across five faculties, and these are the faculties of science, engineering, medicine, dentistry and health, arts and humanities and social sciences. So as I said today, we will be concentrating on engineering, but just in case you or you have friends or family who may be interested in other areas, we do offer all those different areas as well. Within those areas, we have a broad range of subjects. There's only a few listed here, and within each one of these, you'll find various different options, depending on whether you're interested in potentially a year in industry or study abroad opportunities. So do have a look at the website in more detail to have a look at all the different course options we have. If there's something specific you're interested in and you can't find details on, then do get in touch so that we can help you find the right course for you. Now, a bit about employability. We are top 10 university targeted by graduate employers and top five career service in the UK. This is voted for by students and we think it's important to show the statistics of student experience uh, and how the students feel about the service that we've provided them at university and beyond. 96% of our graduates are in work or further study within six months. So we want to help you achieve the career that you want. We support you gaining the skills and the experience which employers are looking for. for so not just so that you can uh, gain your degree and any other professional accreditation that may come with that, but we want to ensure you're getting the hands-on experience and the skills that the employers are looking for. And this means that our graduates are in high demand with top employers. So within that experience we offer you CV and interview workshops, one-to-one -one alumni mentoring, we invite uh, leading employers onto campus to give guest lectures and to train you in what they're looking for in their applications and interviews. We have paid placement opportunities, volunteering opportunities, we can help you find part-time work which you'll be able to do on your student visa in the UK. And then you, we help you to change from your student visa to your graduate visa and the university can help provide that support uh, before you actually reach the point of graduation. We've got business enterprise facilities and once you've left we have alumni support and networks so we don't just close the doors and say goodbye once you've graduated. We want to make sure that we keep in touch with you and that we're supporting you into that graduate employment and beyond. Uh, we have six Nobel Prize winners who have come through the university uh, and some outstanding alumni who may be a slightly more recognisable to you. But who's to say that you won't be the next uh, Nobel Prize winner or outstanding alumni on our list? A little bit about the campus. 
Um, obviously, it's important that while you're studying with us to get that really good uh, hands on experience that we're giving you world class facilities for you to be studying and researching in. So we've invested multi millions of pounds in the teaching and learning facilities that we have. Uh, one of those specifically to engineering, um, which I'm sure the others will talk about in a bit more detail, uh, is our engineering facility on campus, which you can see on our website in a bit more detail with our 360 virtual tour. Of course, you're always welcome, if you can, to come over and visit us in the UK before you have made your applications. But if you're not able to do so, then do take a look at all of those different facility tours and 360s that we have available on our website. As I've said, it's important that that industry, that equipment is uh, recommended by industry. So they will come in and uh, have a look at how we're teaching students and what equipment we're using and make sure that it is the type of equipment that you will need to gain skills on before you get into that world of employment. And then in terms of the study side, our libraries are open 24 days, uh, 24 hours a day, sorry, 366 days a year. So we know that some students like to do things last minute. Um, so they are open, available for you. And we even have transport that runs between the, um, the libraries and the student accommodation as well. Talking of the accommodation, why choose the accommodation provided by the university? Well, first of all, it's guaranteed for all international students, but it also includes all of your bills. So at the moment, when there's a lot of concern about the cost of living increasing, once you've signed up to the university accommodation, your bills are included in that. So you won't be required to spend or to pay the university any more money throughout the year. Uh, it's all included in that initial contract price. Included in that is also something called Residence Life. This is a free event and activity program. It's social support, mentoring support, uh, and it's a really great way of helping you to make friends and integrate into the accommodation and into the university life. It's also extremely safe and has 24 hour security, as well as being close to campus. So you're not traveling between campuses, between the city center and the accommodation. Everything in Sheffield is relatively close, especially if you're used to traveling around large cities in Turkey. Talking of the city itself, so why Sheffield? Well, it's the third most affordable student city in the UK. So again, thinking about your overall cost of your study and living costs here in the UK, it's 25% cheaper on average than being in London. Uh, and as it says here, third most affordable student city in the UK. It's surrounded by natural beauty right on the edge of the Peak District National Park, where you can get involved with a lot of different outdoor activities but is also a thriving city with festivals, independent shopping, and lots of places where you'll be able to meet your friends. We like to support our international students, not just throughout your journey uh, in order to get here, but once you arrive, we've got a dedicated uh, student support team helping you with your student graduation visas and offering airport pickup services, as well as special activities for international students when you arrive. So I briefly mentioned something about scholarships. Uh, I know this is something that a lot of applicants uh, want to know about at the moment. So we've actually got some of the most generous scholarships in the UK for international students. Our undergraduate scholarships are worth up to 50% of the tuition fees, and these are for every year of study. So if you're successful with that in your application, then that would be deducted from your tuition fee for every year of study. That's based on the 2023 entry. So we haven't yet confirmed scholarships for 2024, but obviously once we have your details and we'll be publishing that on our web pages. The undergraduate one is now closed for 2023. So hopefully if you want that, you have made your applications uh, and good luck with those. And um, these applications don't, uh, these applications, sorry, for the merit high achieving undergraduate scholarships um, require an application, but it's literally just a case of uh, putting your name into a hat and answering two questions about um, why you think you deserve that scholarship and letting us know a bit about your passion and enthusiasm, a bit like when you make your application for your course. We also have scholarships for engineering and computer science students. So these are an international excellence scholarship. These are up to £3,000 depending on your results. So in terms of Turkish results for undergraduate students, we'd be looking at a minimum of A-star AA at A-level, 
38 in your IB or 88% or above in your final year of your Turkish diploma. Similarly, for computer science, we're looking for the equivalent of A star, A star, A, which would be IB40 or 91% in your final year Turkish diploma. Again, these are based on the 2023 entry. So if you are looking for 2024 entry or beyond, um, then obviously keep checking back at our websites, get in touch, and we'll confirm those details for you as soon as we have them. The engineering and computer science scholarships don't require any additional application. They will literally just be uh, awarded when we've received your final grades and you've enrolled at the university. That will be automatic for you without an additional application. And the great news is that that can also be com combined with a 50% scholarship. So if you're lucky enough to get the 50% scholarship um, and you get the grades, then you can combine that with the engineering or computer science scholarship as well. For postgraduate students, again, we have something similar. This is 25% of your tuition fee. Again, this is 23 entries. So for 2024 entry or beyond, do keep in touch with us and we'll let you know uh, what those details are. If you are interested for 2023 entry and you haven't yet applied, then that is still open, but the closing date for that is the 16th of March. So do be quick with that. Now for international undergraduate and postgraduate students, we also have a 2000 to 2500 pound scholarship that's available for all international students. Again, this is for this year and 2024 entry scholarships will be confirmed later on in the year. This doesn't need any particular type of application, as long as you have accepted your conditional or insurance offer with us by the 8th of June for undergraduate or the 16th of June for postgraduate. We do also have some sanctuary scholarships for those who are refugees and asylum seekers. If you think you fall into that category, then do get in touch with us. There's a deadline of the 3rd of July for that one. But there's many other ways that you can make money uh, and get different discounts along the way. So do have a look at all the different opportunities for part time work, being an international student ambassador. If you're interested in summer abroad or a study abroad experience, then we do have different funding opportunities for those as well. To apply to the university, you would need for an undergraduate, the equivalent of AAA to BBB. So depending on the qualifications that you're taking in Turkey, we've got the equivalents there of the IB, the American APs, or the Turkish diploma. For engineering subjects, you will require a higher level or equivalent, as I've put there, your 85% in your Turkish diploma in maths and prerequisite uh, science subjects. So each engineering course will list on our entry requirement pages, which maths and science subjects would be required to have those scores. For postgraduate students, we are looking for a between a 2-1 and 2-2. Two, two. So this is equivalent to three out of four for your GPA from your Turkish undergraduate degree, or a 2.7, as long as you have very strong work experience and relevant references. So you will be hearing from one of our international students today, uh, but if you do want to get in touch after today, we've got some opportunities for you to chat to them online, to look at videos available on our web pages, as well as joining us in digital events um, at study slash online dash events, or of course, all the usual social media channels. And that is me done. So at this point, I would like to hand over to Jonathan to tell you much more about the opportunities within the engineering faculty itself. Excellent. Thank you very much. I am just going to share my screen and also um, just make that as well. So hopefully uh, you could just confirm that everyone yes. is okay to see that. Perfect. Yep, we can see that. Wonderful. Thank you very much. So welcome everybody. Um, this is going to be a little bit of an introduction to the Faculty of Engineering. My name is Jonathan Aitken and I am the Departmental Director of Admissions for the Department of Automatic Control and Systems Engineering. Um, 
and we run two of the degree programs within the faculty. But today I'm representing all of the departments and representing everything that we do within the faculty. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of the faculty, talk a little bit through about some of the extra opportunities that are available to you and talk a little bit about, about our facilities in the faculty as well. One of the things I wanted to start with just as a, um, a kind of why Sheffield and particularly why Sheffield for engineering. Um, Obviously, as we're a, we're a top 100 uh, world university and we're one of the targeted employers for uh, graduate employers within the UK, uh, we have the number one student union in the country and we are one of the best value student uh, cities in the UK, as Julia has already mentioned. But the one I'm going to focus on today is actually um, what we offer as a faculty. So thinking about the graduate career perspective and actually thinking about where our graduates go, but also thinking about what we teach you while you would be with us as well. So what does the faculty look like? Well, we are one faculty of five within the university and we're formed up of seven different academic departments. You can see them in the bottom left hand side of the figure there on the left hand side of the screen. So we offer um, a complete suite of engineering degrees across all of the different engineering disciplines from mechanical engineering, uh, materials engineering, electronic and electrical engineering, computer science, civil and structural, chemical and biological, and my own department, automatic control and systems engineering. And we offer computer systems engineering and mechatronic and robotics engineering as our degree programs. In addition to those departments, we also have three interdisciplinary departments which offer um, additional degree programs which are supported by various different departments. So we have aerospace engineering, bioengineering, and general engineering. These are co-taught by different departments who each teach into the program and allow you to specialize right through those program themes. So for example, the aerospace degree program is supported by electrical, elect electronic engineering, mechanical engineering, material science, and automatic control and systems engineering, who each support some of the key tenets of that particular degree program. General engineering is a slightly different program. With general engineering, you take a, a general first two years of the course where you study uh, material from all of the departments. And then for your final year or two years of the course, depending on if you look at BEng or MEng programs, you then specialize in, into one of 11 different specialities. And each of the specialities matches up to one of the academic departments, as well as a couple of other specialities around sustainability um, and also universe, and also other important engineering themes. In terms for the faculty itself, um, our academic lives are driven by two things. We're driven by our teaching and we're also driven by our research. In terms for our research, we had one of the highest research incomes in engineering institutions within the UK um, in the measurement period, which is 20, 2021, where we had 89.1 million pounds of research income. Now, it seems a strange thing to talk about research income when we think about uh, teaching because obviously if you're coming to us, you're coming to study. But the University of Sheffield is a Russell Group University. Um, these are a collection of universities in, in the UK involving Oxford and Cambridge and Imperial. Um, and we practice something called research-led teaching. So what this means is the research work that we do as part of our academic time feeds into the courses, it feeds into our teaching, and it feeds into the material that we teach students. So having a very strong research background is very, very important because it means we're at the cutting edge of research and that means we can bring that cutting edge research into our teaching and make sure that actually everything that we teach you is the most industrially relevant elements we could teach you at that particular moment in time, which puts you in the best position when you think about uh, where you might be progressing with your career after you graduate. In terms for a faculty, we are quite a large faculty. We have over a thousand um, staff and we have about 6,700 students. Um, obviously these vary year to year um, and they'll vary between each of the different courses as well. Some of the courses will take more students, some of the courses will take slightly fewer students due to um, the various constraints within the department. But we are a busy and thriving um, faculty and we partner with various groups within the area. You can see one of the groups that I've mentioned there is the AMRC group. This stands for the, this stands for the Advanced Manufacturing Research Centre. 
And this is a centre of excellence that is on the outskirts of Sheffield. I'm actually out um, there today um, working with various sets of industrial partners. But this group reaches out into industry and brings key industrial contacts and industrial players into the Sheffield City region. So um, at the moment, it has various different research centres. One, for example, is um, sponsored with Boeing and Boeing themselves now are based within Sheffield. We also have McLaren um, and also various and Airbus and other major manufacturers who are who either partner with us or are based themselves in, in Sheffield. As a faculty, we are very international. Um, I know Julie has mentioned as a university, we are international and we, we enjoy supporting different students um, of various different nationalities and also have um, um, staff drawn from all over the world. If you look at our um, the makeup, we're from roughly 75 different countries uh, are represented either in our student body or in our staff body as well. In terms of the facilities that we offer, we do offer world-class facilities. I know Julia has already mentioned the diamond and I would encourage you again to go and have a look at the 360 tour of the diamond. It really is um, a wonderful building. It's a wonderful facility. And this is the center of undergraduate teaching. It's where um, there are 11 different lectures, uh, sorry, 11 different uh, laboratories within the building and also nine different lecture theatres within the building, as well as group working spaces and computer rooms as well. And it's the focus, particularly the, the strong focus of our early years teaching as part of our undergraduate courses, and also some of the early work that we do as MSc courses. It was purpose built to teach engineering to undergraduates at a wide scale, at a large scale. It was an 81 million pound investment um, which was then also topped up with some of the equipment that's in there. We have clean rooms in the facility. We have um, an aerospace lab with, uh, with a jet engine as part of it, because we appreciate that one of the key things for being an engineer is being able to get your hands on the equipment and actually use it, work with it, and actually understand how it works, and experiment and explore. That's one of the critical features for the diamond, it's to get as um, to have a resource where we can get students through that space in as timely manner as possible. So what by that, what I mean is we'll teach you something on a Monday and we can have you in labs working on it on a Tuesday. That's really very, very important, particularly as part of, um, part of our teaching process, because you don't want to be in labs two weeks before you've been taught something. You don't want to be in labs two weeks after you've, taught some, what you've been taught something. You want to be able to be exploring hand in hand with your teaching. And the Diamond facility enables us to do this and provide it across all of our engineering courses, all of our different disciplines, and all of the students who come in to those different disciplines. That isn't the only building that we have, but it's the central focus for um, our teaching. As academics, most of our staff offices are in the mapping building. Now the mapping building is um, an older established building within the university. It houses some of our later years labs. So for example, for third and fourth year or for later MSc labs. And it also hosts our academic labs as well. So our research labs that you may use either as part of a final year project or part of an MSc project as well. It's been home to the faculty for almost 150 years. Um, and it is a, a wonderful building. It's a large space that actually houses all of our staff. But actually, just recently, um, we realized that we could add a little bit more space to it. So we completed the heart space project. And you can see in this, this image on the right hand side of the slide, the heart space. Um, this is a new meeting space. It's a new cafe. It's a new group workspace. It's new labs, uh, particularly breaking out some of the labs that were in the diamond and giving them another home as well, slightly closer to the faculty. Um, it's a wonderful space. It's a lovely space to, to be in. It's a lovely space to meet. It's a lovely space to talk and also to work with students as well. Because one of the things that's very important to us within the faculty is the collegiate atmosphere of our students. It's the ability for being able to sit down with your friends, with problem sheets or programming classes, and actually work on that problem amongst your peers and amongst your group. And this gives us a space where we can actually do that in a flexible space, which is our space to use. Now, 
one of the things, as I say, as part of the Diamond and part of the 360 tour, I'd encourage you to look up the iForge. Um, the iForge is a wonderful space. It's a maker space. So it's a space where you're able to use and build and create um, designs and models, either as part of a course, as part of a co-curricular activity, or that you're just interested in doing yourselves as part of an individual project. Um, it's run by students, for students. So effectively, it's a space where um, you can go in, and you can design, build, create what you need separately outside of the main lab spaces for your courses. It's a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity to work within the, within the makerspace area. Um, as I said, it's run by our students. So um, the, the people who help you with the 3D printers, help you with the laser cutters, help you with the laser cinders, help you with the, whatever prototyping you want to do, aren't academics. They're students who have been trained up to use that equipment. They're students who are, being, who are trained up to know how the 3D printers work, to know how um, they can adapt them and how they can work with other students as well as part of that process. So it's, if you're interested in actually making things and creating, it's a wonderful opportunity to get involved in a space that will expand your skills because actually it will push you because you'll have 10 people come to you with a different project that they want to build and you're there helping them realize what they want to do with the equipment that you have available as part of that. And it's a really wonderful space and a wonderful opportunity to build those types of skills. Um, Julie has already mentioned our library spaces. We have five libraries across the university and they're there for group independent or silent work, depending on um, what is correct and what is right for you at the time. One of the key things that they do, though, is they also offer a series of skills workshops. Um, to be able to interface with literature, to be able to interface with um, the body of work that sits out, out there in the world. This is particularly important when you get to the final year project of your degree programme, when you're looking to understand where research is in the world and how you can apply your thoughts and ideas into it. What they'll teach you is how you actually can go through this in a formulate um, process so you can get the information you need and drive it out of there. And they will run some wonderful sessions supporting our students in actually realizing how to engage with this wider body of work and this wider world. In terms of our degree programs, our degree programs are very flexible. We offer um, lots of different options and lots of different choices. Um, a lot of people will commonly say, well, I'm never quite sure which, de which degree program to pick. My advice for students is always to pick the degree program that you want to pick. Um, so if you're unsure between two degree programs, go and have a look at the modules um, that those degree programs offer. All of our departments will let you know uh, what modules they teach as part of the course, um, what work they support, and kind of what the later years modules in their courses actually are. Have a read of them. See what appeals to you. See what you think. Um, it is possible to transfer between some of our programmes in first year, and it's possible to transfer to some of our other programmes in second year. So it, it can happen while you're here, but I wouldn't recommend it as a given because a lot of our courses are very busy and are very popular. So actually, we may not be able to accept a transfer depending on um, what decisions departments might make. So I would recommend really going through very thoroughly um, the material just to make sure that you're happy with your choices, but also know that it is possible to make transfers whilst you're here. In terms of the masters or bachelors, this is a common question that a lot of people will ask. Um, and what is the difference between these two? Obviously, the bachelor's course is a three years course. The master's course is a four year course. Um, you come out with one degree in each of these. So you come out with a bachelor of engineering on the three year course or a master of engineering on the four year course. Um, typically, you'll see on the master of engineering course, you'll see a group project as part of the third year of that course. Um, you don't take that group project on the, the bachelor's course. And the final year of each of the two courses has a uh, a large individual project where you work closely with an academic. In terms of moving between the two, 
there are options in terms for when you're here. Officially, in all the departments, the, the bachelor's and master's courses are the same for the first and second year. It's at the end of second year that we actually make a decision um, where the two courses actually split. Because as I said, in on the bachelor's course, you will have a, uh, a final year project, whereas on a master's course, you'll have a group project. This switch is typically done on merit. Um, so we would expect students who are on the MEng to have a, an average grade of over 54.5, typically, although for some departments it may also differ. And it's just to make sure that your progression is on average with what we would expect for a master's programme. We also offer study abroad, which gives you an opportunity to take a year at another university. And also, we, or you could take an industrial placement, which is a paid year. And again, it's a very popular programme and one I would very strongly recommend where you'll go out and work for a company. I've mentioned BEng and MEng, and I've mentioned industrial placement year. The one key thing to note about the industrial placement year is um, as part of that year, we will help you put out, uh, put your job applications in. I'd love to say that we have lots of jobs lined up and we can just give them to you, but it is a competitive process with other students within the UK for those particular positions. So you'd be putting applications in, in the same way that you would for a graduate career job. But in the faculty, we also have a very strong um, industrial placement support team, our career support team, and they will help you um, tailor your CV and give you tips and tricks around writing applications so that you can put the best possible application in that you can. Again, anyone who wishes to study abroad for a year, there is an opportunity to be able to undertake um, a whole school year, a semester, or another year, or a year abroad. And it's a great opportunity to take time to study in a different culture. Alternatively, if anyone is considering studying actual languages, th these courses are also available within the university. One of the things I think Sheffield excels in, one of the things I'm particularly proud that we do, um, and it's always the one that surprises me when people talk about it, because back in the day when I was a student, we, did, we didn't have elements like this. And it's one of the things that I think is wonderful to see is the opportunities outside of the classroom to take part in either co-curricular projects or extracurricular engineering programs that give you a collection of extra skills that add to your CV, that ultimately make you more employable to um, industrial um, partners who, who you might be looking for a job for once you graduate. In the first two years of the program, we run large engineering team projects. They take place in the January of each of the years and they run in sequential weeks. So for the first years, we run a, something called Global Engineering Challenge. Um, here, we split our entire first year cohort in the faculty into groups. So this doesn't just mean that if you're an aerospace engineer, you'll be working with aerospace engineers. It means you'll be an aerospace engineer who's working with material scientists, with computer scientists, with civil engineers, with mechanical engineers. You'll be working from students drawn right across the faculty. And it's a problem solving exercise where we expect you to be working on tasks that are relevant for the global world, but applying the knowledge that you've learned to actually resolve problems in any part of the world. Engineering You're Hired is the equivalent program that we run in second year. And again, it's a week long opportunity. It's a week long chance to work with other students within the faculty but now driving at specific engineering problems, supported by a wide variety of different companies who will come in and talk to you about the problems during the week and actually thinking about what solutions you could potentially produce. But again, it's about working in large teams of people with different backgrounds and also different skill levels as well. And that's one of the crucial things that allows you to stand out because this is what you're gonna be doing every day as a graduate engineer. One of the other excellent opportunities we can offer is the Societies and Challenges. Now, these are co-curricular projects which allow you to put your skills to the test. So whether it be elements like Formula Student, which is a student-run um, racing team where the team are responsible, the team is 50 or 60 students who are designing and building a race car and then taking it to compete against other universities within the UK, whether you're designing and building rockets whether you are working on 
problems to do with trains, whether it be problems looking at solar observation. We have a wide collection of these different projects. And the crucial thing for these is that they are student run. They're student led and they're student run. It isn't an academic like myself who is taking the lead for the project. Um, the manager for the project is one of our senior students. Probably they're a student who's been in, who's been part of that business, part of that kind of company because they work as little company models for a number of years throughout their student degree programs. So they probably joined them in first year, uh, took on a technical task. They may have led it in second year. They may have led that technical area in second year, led a number of technical areas in their third year before finally becoming manager of the overall project within their fourth year. And they're managing 50 or 60 different students in different groups. Yes, there's an academic involved who provides assistance and we make sure everything goes OK. But the crucial thing for the students is actually building up that skill. So um, to take an example, a common, a common interview question that someone might ask is, tell us a time where you've worked as a member of a team. Well, if I was to pick our Sunrise project, which is our, which is our student rocket project, um, the guys who are on that team could say, I worked as a member of a team which contained 30 to 40 different students of different backgrounds. And as part of that project, we set a UK altitude record for a, a, a university or a student built rocket. We launched to just over 36,000 feet um, and our rocket passed Mach 2 on the way up. And it was safely recovered again when it landed back in the desert. It gives you an opportunity to work on these wide scale projects and use the skills that you've been taught as part of the course to actually um, realize impressive engineering projects in the real world. We also have Seller, which is our leadership academy, and this is um, to encourage students, to encourage undergraduates to have a positive impact in research industry, and it fosters the skills that you need to be able to go out, to be able to manage and to lead these styles of projects. In terms of Sheffield, in terms of the city region itself, we are a hub for engineering industries. At the university, we have uh, close partnerships with a number of different um, leading industrial players. You'll often find that these are part of what the departments call their industrial advisory board. And these are companies who come in and advise us on our programs, telling us what their needs are for future graduates. That way we can wrap those in to our programs to make sure our graduates have the most appropriate training possible to go out into the working world. And Siemens is just one case of this and they partner with us very closely. We work as part of the Siemens Connected Curriculum, actually giving students opportunities to work as part of kind of living labs and living data centers. We have the Advanced Manufacturing Research Center, as I said, which is where I am today, um, which works with a wide range of industry, both large players and also small medium enterprises in producing solutions as part of their manufacturing problems. So producing the factories of the future. We have the Boeing facility. Um, it's the first time Boeing have built a manufacturing facility in Europe. It's just across the road from where I am today. And it was a multi-million pound production facility, which they moved to Sheffield specifically because of some of the resources that we have and also the students that we produce within the area as well, who can ultimately become their employees in those types of sites. We work closely as well with McLaren. Um, so one of McLaren's um, manufacturing centers, again, is just over the road from where I'm sitting today. Um, and it's a partnership between the Advanced Manufacturing Research Center and the company working on how they can actually manufacture the tubs and the chassis of the car using uh, a variety of different carbon fiber lay down processes that have been developed within the university. But in terms of where our graduates go, we go to a wide range of different um, institutions and different places, um, both small, medium and large players, international companies, as well as uh, local companies as well. Um, in terms for our graduates, typical graduate starting salaries around £30,000, which increases um, once graduates become chartered. And approximately 90% of our engineering graduates are working in professional employment six months after graduating. In terms of finding out more, you've got an opportunity to ask any questions that you would like today to be able to chat to our students. We have our Sheffield Live events, um, which give you an opportunity to interact with us online. And finally, we've got our online tours and videos as well. But obviously, 
Um, it would be wonderful to see you in Sheffield. And if you ever want to visit, please either get in touch with Julia or get in touch with the departments as well, should you be in the UK. And we'd be very, very happy to show you around and show you some of our facilities. At that point, I'm gonna say thank you very much. Um, and I shall hand on the next presenter. Thanks very much, Jonathan. So Amiral, I think that's over to you. Um, so Amiral is one of our international engineering student ambassadors. So uh, this is where it's his chance to be able to tell you all about studying here in Sheffield from a student perspective. Thanks, Amiral. Hello, everyone. Uh, just to reintroduce myself, my name is Ayman. I'm currently in my final year doing electrical shorting engineering. And before this, I was, uh, I was studying in Malaysia. So I want to talk about the experience that you can actually get as a student in the University of Sheffield. As Jonathan has mentioned, a novelty that you can do is something called an, called an industry placement. So uh, last year, I fortunately was able to get an industry placement with uh, General Electric. So during this time, I was a control engineer working in, in to solve uh, H high voltage direct current transmission, mainly looking at uh, automating regression testing, looking at control systems, uh, managing requirement management, uh, doing design guides and doing a few STEM events. So uh, that's a picture of me doing a conference, uh, doing a business STEM event in Cheltenham. So the university itself, gives you a lot of good help with getting an industry industry placement by giving you like vacancies helping you with writing cover letters interview skills and just generally giving you the necessary skills that you need to actually apply for for a job i would say an industry placement is such a good opportunity if you do get the chance to do it because for one you actually apply what you learn in your course into an actual industry you actually get to know what the industry is actually like whether you actually know if you like that industry or not uh, you, you can build a lot of good connection with the industry leaders during that time in your, in your industry and the best part is you do get paid during that time uh, so some people uh, at the end of their industry placement get a job straight away uh, that's the same in my case so the, my company has offered me a job straight after my industry placement which i'll be going back to them so i didn't have to worry in my final year to find a job in the uk uh, there's a link there if you want to go uh, for more information regarding industry placement. So one big thing I want to talk about why you should stay uh, study in Sheffield is, and one of the main reasons I got the job in in the first place was the all the extracurricular activity that we have around in Sheffield. So Jonathan has mentioned a few of them. So one of them is student like activity. So I fortunately got to be able to be involved in uh, the student lab project Sunset. So instead of making rockets, we were making satellite systems. So during this time, I was in charge of uh, looking at the power delivery system. I was working in the avionics team. So I, I was designing that PCB that you see in the picture there, uh, doing weekly meetings with everyone and just designing our system for about two to three years. So during that time, it gave, gave me a lot of technical skills and a lot of soft skills that uh, employers always want to see, which gives you an edge during like uh, job interviews or just generally hunting, uh, looking for jobs. So some of the extra stuff that you can do alongside uh, university. So we all, we every now and then we have uh, what we call hackathons. So those are pr uh, programs that where, we, where you can actually uh, try to solve a real world problem. So one thing I did was uh, I got to be involved is, is called uh, Hacksessible. So we were looking at trying to create like a tracking system for praying. So we created that. Uh, so there's other types of hackathons throughout the year. So you have one focusing on bionics. There's one focusing on um, other accessibility issues. There's a, just a general range of um, hackathons that we also do that you can take part alongside your study. And one thing that uh, Jordan might not have mentioned is during your year in uh, engineering your higher program, you can also actually go above that. So the year uh, engineering your higher event is mainly focusing in Sheffield, working alongside uh, other classmates from civil engineering, uh, computers, computer science, uh, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering. So that is working on a real world problem. But after that, you can actually compete with other universities. So um, 
my team has actually competed to the highest level where we competed with other universities such as Surrey, uh, Imperial College, where we actually present our idea for our project and I have actually won the uh, People's Choice Award. So during that time, really good opportunity all around, just basically gaining extra skills that employees always want to see. But enough about all the uh, engineering technical side, Let's talk about the student experience that you can actually get involved in in Sheffield. So Sheffield is very close to the Peak District. So it's like a, a wilderness kind of area. It's a very green area. So one thing I really like to do just to unwind as, is to just have a hike. So this is me and my friends going out to the Peak District. You can get there either by walking there, getting a car there, or just going by bus. And you can just have a nice hike during uh, on the weekend. Uh, Someone has mentioned this, the student union in Sheffield is the number one student union for the last six years. The reason for that is because we all have over 300 uh, societies and over 60 sports societies. Societies are like uh, clubs that you can do uh, outside your curriculum. So some societies that we have are ethical hacking, beekeeping, um, baking society, uh, photography. That's, that's a whole range that you can easily find on our uh, student union website and the best part about this is you don't actually have to commit to do any of the societies we have give it a go session just to try it out to see if you actually like it and because Sheffield is very international we always want to uh, cater we always uh, have events to cater around them so the picture on your top right is the World Food Festival we had recently so a few society um, were doing like a food, food stall during that time. So we actually got to try out different food from different cultures. And my favorite event every year is Varsity, is where we compete with, uh, I think, 60 sports events between the University of Sheffield and the University of Hallam, which is the university next to us. It's just a range of uh, different sports society and it can get really competitive and quite, quite a nice experience to just make uh, us feel like uh, really connected. So the bot bottom right there is the biggest event is the ice hockey event up to 10,000 students will actually join that uh, actually view that event so uh, some of you might be concerned about uh, finances so you can easily do get part-time jobs alongside your study we have a service called career connect so this career connect actually has um, vacancies to do with part-time job on campus off campus you can actually get uh, both industry placement, uh, summer jobs, and also graduate uh, vacancies all on Career Connect. They is a one-stop one shop to find any jobs throughout your university journey. They help, they also have workshops on uh, personal branding, CV writing, uh, just various different types of workshops to actually help you to get a job. So as part of uh, my student experience, I also got to be involved as a student ambassador, just being in this kind of, uh, this kind of line of work, get to talk to a lot of different people. So in my uh, personal opinion, coming from someone who has lived in up uh, around three different cities in the UK, Sheffield is the cheapest one in my personal opinion. And we also have, uh, again, the number one student union in the UK. One Another reason besides all the societies is that the amount of support that they give us, there is a uh, financial hardship funds in case you have to access them, but generally, uh, the staff in the student union are very helpful for any for most situation that you might might face. So, so yeah, that, that's uh, about wraps up my section. Thank you very much. That's really nice to hear. Um, so we've been going through uh, the questions and answers um, while the presentations have been taking place. So hopefully we've answered all those that have popped up. If you do have any more questions, now is your time to pop those in the chat. Um, and Pina, do you want to quickly say what support you can offer in Turkish? Sure. Thank you so much, Julia. Herkese merhabalar, ben Pınar Zengin, Edukasyon Üçüş Eğitim Danışmanlığı firmasında akademik direktör olarak çalışıyorum. Öğrencilerimize İstanbul'da üç branşta, branşta İzmir ve Ankara'da destek oluyoruz. O yüzden dilediğiniz 
e, şubemize bize biz, bize ulaşabilirsiniz dediğimiz şubemize telefon ederek. E, ama şimdi e, chat kısmına yine bizim iletişim detaylarımızı yazıyorum. University of Sheffield'ın Türkiye resim temsilcisi olarak görev yapıyoruz. E, öğrencilerimize ücretsiz hizmet sunuyoruz. E, çünkü üniversitenin resim temsilcisiyiz. Üniversitemizle ilgili başvuru süreciyle belgelerle ilgili vize, konaklama, her türlü sorularınızla ilgili bizlere ulaşabilirsiniz. Çok teşekkürler. Sorularınızı Türkçe veya İngilizce yöneltirseniz eğer bizler cevaplamaya hazırız. Çok teşekkür ederim. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pina. Um, yeah, just to say, working with our agency in country is um, invaluable to us. And I think Pina will agree that we communicate very often. So if you're trying to get questions and answers through to the university, or you've made an offer and you haven't, uh, you've made a, an application and haven't had an offer yet, um, then Pina and her colleagues in Educas will contact me and chase those up. So we do like to hope, hopefully get things quickly answered for you and get those offers, scholarship applications and cast for your visa to you as soon as possible. So they are a great support to us. Hopefully, um, I will be in Turkey again in September, October. So look out on our web pages for opportunities to visit us when we are uh, in country. Uh, otherwise, as we've already mentioned, there are lots of opportunities to engage with us online with Sheffield Live events. You don't have to be an applicant or an offer holder. Those Sheffield Live events are available for everybody. So do have a look out for those on our web pages. Chat to our student ambassadors online. And if you can come over and see us in your holidays, you're welcome to do that. Just get in touch and we can arrange campus tour, department visit, as Jonathan said. Uh, and we're really keen to be able to, to show you around and to answer all those questions that you might have. I don't think there's any more questions sitting in the question and answer box. No, it looks like we've answered those. So hopefully that's that means we've done a good job. Um, but yes, we are here. If you have any questions after today, then do please get in touch with us. I'll drop the international one in there again, just in case. Thank you very much for the great presentation, Julia, Jonathan, Ayman, Natalika. It was very informative for the attendees and you covered all of the questions. Thank you for your answers. And also, I would like to thank the participants in Turkish as well. Katıldığınız için teşekkür ederiz arkadaşlar. Umarım sizin için de faydalı bir webinar olmuştur. University of Sheffield ile ilgili diğer sorularınız için chat kısmında paylaşılmış olan mail adresinden Pınar Hanım'a ulaşabilirsiniz. Aynı zamanda birazdan Julia da international mail adresini paylaşacak. Ona da o mail adresine ulaşabilirsiniz. Bir sonraki webinarlarımızda görüşmek üzere. Thank you very much again everyone. It was a pleasure to have you in IFT Talk. And you were typing the international mail address, Julia, right? Yes. I think they are waiting for it. Oh, I put that in a private one. There we go. Yeah, thank you so much. And hope to see you in another session. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.